Howdy YouTubes. Um, I am in a hotel. No, I use the word hotel loosely because this is truly the most bizarre establishment I've ever been in. There's no restaurant, which is why I'm eating a mug shot in my room. Um, so anyway, I'm in the Midlands. I've been in this hotel for a week now and the cabin fever is setting in. Um, not only is there no restaurant, there's no bar, so I set my own up. There's no breakfast facilities, um, so yeah, it's porridge, kale, it's just a weird place. And uh, don't get me started on the maid service. Anyway, tomorrow I'm going to drive my little van to Shropshire, tongue tied there, and uh, hopefully going to find some nice walks. Going to do a bit of research this evening and uh, yeah, Shropshire tomorrow morning. Hopefully we uh, find something nice. Well, we better turn the music off before we get a copyright strike, eh? The YouTube gods are cruel. Um, well, good morning YouTube. Here we are, it's the next morning and I'm definitely going here walking in Shropshire. Um, However, I did bring my small decathlon day pack. I got my walking trousers, I got my boots, I got a raincoat, I got a camera. Um, I didn't really bring anything else, which there's a lesson to be learned in this. I own three trangias, twig stove, gas fire stove, two gas stoves. I could be mixing this stuff around in my bags, like three, three trangias. Oh, thank you, like. Um, it wouldn't have been too much effort for me to put... No, it's not going to come back on. It wouldn't have been too much effort for me to uh, put one of those trangias at least in my day pack with one of those small bottles of meths. No, I didn't think of that. So, anyway, before I drive 50, 60 miles west um, to uh, find some nice hills to walk up, uh, there is an army surplus store um local so i might pop in there and buy like some hexamine maybe a little hexy stove you know one of the little fold up rectangular jobbies and uh, oh probably some other stuff because i like surplus stores um but right now i'm parked outside a petrol station waiting for my pants to wash um it's such a glamorous life i live anyway i'll come back to you soon Ooh. So my friends, laundry's done and I've driven for about 10 minutes and I've found the uh, army surplus store. Yay! But days of the week don't really mean much to me. Usually I work today. I'm not working today. It's a Sunday. So of course it's closed. Um, there's a big Sainsbury's across the road so I'm going to go in there and I'm going to improvise. <laughs> Let's see what we can pick up in Sainsbury's. And, um, yeah. Hope this day gets better. Oi, look after the van. I made it. I'm outside. There's hills and streams and springs and uh, right, but who cares? Um, I actually feel a bit under-equipped. When I parked up at the car park, um, there was a lot of people dressed and carrying equipment as if they were uh, making for uh, the summit of K2, to be honest. Um, I think this only goes up to about 500 metres, so well below the death zone. I think I'll be all right. Oh, really rugged landscape here. Really rugged. Oh, look at that little kid in the orange. Obviously, been watching uh, Les Stroud videos. 
You couldn't lose her if you tried, could you? Right, now of all the times I've ever not had my walking poles on me, this is the one time I wish I had my walking poles on me. This is actually the path. I'm not going off piste. This is the proper path. And I could really do with that uh, secure walking pole feeling. Oh, thank God. Dry here. I didn't want to go away over tea. Oh. I know I was taking the mickey out of that little girl earlier with a, a bright orange anorak, but let's be honest. She's got the right idea. If I was to go missing here, they'd never find me. I'd be doomed. Stunning views, eh? Oh, I don't want to speak too soon, but I think we might be reaching the first summit. Maybe. <sighs> Be nice if the sun could crack through those clouds. That'd make my day. It's trying. Come on. Sunshine. Three, two, one. Glorious. Oh. If only I could do something about the wind. I have no idea if you couldn't hear me, but there'd be a trick point. So I must be at the top. Hey, a trick point that doubles up the water feature. Oh, the sun's come up to the me as well. Oh, fantastic. Oh, bloody hell. Hey, look at me, Des. I'm on a hill. Ooh, the wind has dropped. So we are 517 metres above sea level. And uh, what's this trail called? Uh, Long Mind? Apologies if I butchered that pronunciation. I'm not sure if it's English or Welsh. But you see, this side is the view of England over yonder. An unpronounceable side is the view of Wales. So, uh, the, the one most people go up is this uh, wrecking, 407 metres high, which isn't the highest. I don't know if you can pick it out with the camera, it's in the clouds, but it's certainly the most imposing. It's got the steepest slopes, so maybe I'll do that another time. I need to uh, find some shelter from the wind, I think, and have a bit of water. Dave. He'd get in his jeep, wouldn't he? Oh, I'll tell you what Dave Canterbury would do. He'd make for those trees over there. Let's do that. Do you know, I know sometimes I'm a bit negative in my videos about this wonderful green and pleasant land. And I was going to say, I bet those trees are surrounded by barbed wire. And I thought, no, don't be so negative. Of course they're not. But of course they are, aren't they? Um, Anyway, it's a bit less blowy here. Maybe I'll just try and find a dryish spot um, around this uh, around this fence near the trees or something. Less wind here. The trees are definitely breaking up the wind noise a bit. Decapitated, aren't I? One second. Oh, that's even worse. Um, okay, so I've got a little spot. I'm not in the fence, I'm outside. And um, so, ooh, there's a lot of poop here. A lot of uh, deer poop. Uh, I shuffle over here, unless. Uh, Inclined to sit if the deer poop.
So, as you saw earlier today, I, uh, I initially wanted to go to a army surplus store to get some supplies and unbeknown to me it was Sunday so that army surplus store was closed and then I thought I'll go to the Sainsbury supermarket and do a bit of a supermarket challenge but of course it was 9.30 and supermarkets don't, don't really open until 10 or 11 a.m. on a Sunday so I just started driving to uh, where am I? Oh, it's been a long day. Am I in Staffordshire? No, I'm in Shropshire. I'm not in Staffordshire. I'm sure it's a lovely place. I'm in Shropshire. Um, anyway, but I stopped at a retail park. I saw a retail park signed off the motorway. And there was a decathlon in that uh, retail park. And I thought, sod it, I'm just going to go to a decathlon and cheat and buy a load of camping stuff. Uh, but truly, it was the smallest decathlon I've ever been in my life. It wasn't very good. I bought a sit mat. Nice reflecty one. That's nice. Like three pounds. Bargain. I'm going to uh, lean on that now. And I thought, oh, I'll just buy some cooking gear in there. Oh, it's really comfy, that. And, um, no, it was a rubbish decathlon. So, I went in TK Maxx. Um, I don't know if you have TK Maxx in the States. It's definitely lower class than Walmart. How can I describe TK Maxx? Um, like if you had a garage sale in a shop. Yeah, that's TK Maxx. <laughs> um, so anyway, I bought a few bits from TK Maxx. And um, hopefully... I can somehow cook some lunch. Now remember, I'm not allowed campfires, um, but I do need to boil some water without having a campfire. So, I did in TK Maxx buy a steel water bottle. That was quite tricky to get because um, they're all double walled, insulated, vacuum sealed. Um, this one is single, steel it's got some rubber silicon around the top and then the the lid's not actually metal it's just a sort of so that'll have to come off plastic you get inside but that'll do i mean it's a start that's got a piece of paper in it that won't taste very nice um what else did i get oh i bought lunch in decathlon um oh i've got some more bottles of water they're all ready in my van I did buy a, a, a dehydrated, like a proper, like a proper backpacker. Um, dehydrated. So hence why I need boiling water. I got a couple of bottles of water. I always got water in my van because my work is such uh, thirsty work. I bought some cutlery in decathlon. It was only three pounds. That's not bad, is it? My fork and spoon for three pounds. I suppose you can just get them free, can't you? Plastic mines are box, but it's all right, it'll do. Um, what else did I bring? Some more layers, in case it gets cold. Right, so this fire, no camping problem. No camping, no fire, no nothing. Um, bought some shoe polish. I'm going to try and boil some water on shoe polish. Now, this shoe, I've no idea if this is going to work. It says premium shoe polish, but it costs a pound. It's probably made out of children's crayons. Um, I'd much rather have some kiwi or something like that. Parade gloss. Let's see how well this goes. This could all go very badly, I tell you. I've got to share this with you because I, I, I love it. I don't know if you can re look. This bottle can be refilled and reused. That's ingenious. Imagine that a bottle you can fill up, empty and fill up again. Jesus Christ! What will they think of next? Ingenious. Anyway, um, let's see how much water or pasta needs. I tell you what, I need to start wearing my glasses. 
my eyesight. Now, um, Decathlon is of course a Spanish chain, so English is usually about the 12th language listed on anything you buy from Decathlon. Uh, okay, I'll just read the French. Yes, yes, okay, five to eight minutes. Hmm, can't see how much water. I guess, is there a line? I don't know. say. Do you know, it's genuinely not got English instructions. I'm alright reading the French, but it doesn't say how much or what. Oh well. Oh, 280 mil. There's a picture near the bottom. So. It, look, look, there's no English there, really. Not that I can see. I will say that's the really odd thing about uh, shopping in Decathlon. If you want to buy clothes, um, trousers in particular, be prepared for some mental acrobatics because they use this bizarre, well, they use European. French, I don't know what clove siding they use. Right, they've got to try and get this out. It's starting to rain. I've not got a tarp. I've got a raincoat, that's it. And I'm wearing it. Oh, why can't I get this out? Come on. Come out. Why would they put this piece of paper in my bottle? I hope this isn't instructions on how to pour water into the bottle. I guarantee you it is probably something stupid like that. I might just set fire to it. Right, there's going to be swearing in a minute, so I'll bring you back in a second. Why? Would, would anyone... Well, why would they feel the need to do that? The same reason they felt the need to do that. I'm intrigued as to what's written on this. How to use. Do not add hot water. Cold drinks only. Oh well, we'll ignore that. Um, warning for cold drinks only. What? I want that to set fire to it. Anyway, let's... It says it's stainless steel. What are they talking about? Do you know, I thought these were measuring marks, but it's stupid words. Uh, so, that's 500 mil, so half of that, or thereabouts. Yeah, we go with thereabouts. Right, let's be really bushcrafty. Somehow. Uh, 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 uh. Uh. I'm not going to set fire to anything. Because we're not allowed to. Well, you can see what I've done there. I've, I've sort of wedged my bottle in that bit of broken branch and stuck my shoe polish underneath. Can you boil water on shoe polish? We're going to find out. Okay. Truly, no idea if that's going to work. Um, I'm hoping the ground and all the branches and everything are wet enough to uh, not catch fire. You could do it with a windshield, really, couldn't it? 
Oh well, I'll bring you back in a while and we'll see what happens. Right, I gave up on uh, hanging the bottle sort of gingerly over it. I've just sort of got it as close as possible in the hope that works. Um, but there's so much wind, I'm worried it's cooling it off quickly. You know, I do think that water is uh, starting to bubble, which is good. Of course, the next problem is I haven't got heat proof glove or anything like that. I've got my heavy cotton sweater. I can wrap that round my hand and pour that in. I reckon that'll be all right. Um, I don't think I'll get the third degree burns. Um, yeah, we'll be all right with that, I reckon. I'm not sure whether to just let that go till the end. It's very smoky. I'll tell you what, a shoe polish fire works in a fix. And that water's just starting to... Uh, yeah, it's just starting to steam now. If I had a metal lid, I would have put a metal lid in it, but because it's plastic, I didn't want it to melt. Oh, I just spotted some, uh, some walkers. And we go incognito before they start wondering what the uh, smell of burning shoe polish is. Where's me, uh, where's me camo sunglasses when you need them? Mm. That water's steaming nicely now. Let me show you. I think. That's nearly there, and it's sort of steaming along. Steam, to me, means it's evaporating, and I think water evaporates at 100 degrees, doesn't it? Even though it's not a rolling boil. This is near as damn it. Okay. Ah, oh, okay, so on the back of this, it's got, like, line number six. Where is it? There? And inside there are there are lines. Okay, you can tell this is the first time I've ever had a dehydrated backpacking uh, meal, so I don't really know what I'm doing. Anyway, so now onto the dangerous bit. Uh, don't do this at home, children. I am, for want of a better word. Stupid. Um, so anyway, I've got this uh, cotton sweat. It's like 100% cotton, so I should be able to. I reckon if I, yeah, I just make like oven gloves out of it. And uh, ready? One, two, three. Glug 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 glug. Put that in. I can feel a bit of warmth coming through, but I'm not burning myself. Put that on there. That will go out. Uh, what am I meant to do? Am I meant to stir this or something? Give it a little stir and then leave it to uh, do its thing. Uh, oh no, it's got plastic. Uh, Agitation. Ooh, something smells uh, reasonably appetizing. But you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to wrap that in my little cotton sweater there, actually, just to keep it warmer. It's still warm, so it must have been pretty close to a rolling boil. Oh, she looks, well, it looks reasonable. It looks like canteen pasta. Let's give it a go. It smells, it smells all right. Do you know? That is okay. A bit oily, but to be honest, the fats and oils, I'm going to put a bib on because I don't want to get 
oil down my nice raincoat. <laughs> um, as I was saying, the fats and oils give you a lot of energy, so um, not complaining about them. Mm. Definitely oily. Wouldn't be to everyone's uh, taste, but if you're burning the energy, doesn't really matter. Anyway, I'll bring you back when I'm done. Hmm. That sort of worked, didn't it? Decathlon dehydrated pasta bolognese meal cooked on a tin of shoe polish and because you're not allowed campfires I'm now going to try and bang these final few kilometres out as quick as possible because I think the weather is about to turn nasty so if I see any nice views I'll be sure to point the camera at them Oh, cold so the, there are of course some mighty fine views behind me um, I'm just heading back up to the trig point because that's where I was make a, meant to make a turn before I deviated off. Uh, the good thing is the wind is behind me now and the gusts are pushing me along quite nicely. Um, whether I wouldn't move or not. <laughs> um, yeah, it is. This is a nice bit of the world. Shame it's not clear. I'm sure on a clear sunny day, you know, it'd be breathtaking. That's breathtaking as it is, but you'd be suffocating on a sunny day if you saw all that. Not the best path. That's how people get lost. Um, if you don't hear from me again, uh, I'm up on this hill somewhere. <laughs> oh god. I should have worn a bright orange jacket like that little girl. I've only dropped down about 30 feet, but the distance is still windy, don't get me wrong, but at least now I can hear myself think. Um, but yeah, some cracking views here. Really nice. I like it. Oh, cold though, I'll tell you. I'm wishing I had some gloves. Getting old, no circulation. It's gnarly terrain, isn't it? You don't want to wrong foot yourself here, or have a crosswind take you over. I find it weird how you get these sporadically placed trees on like hillsides. It's like they're lost. It's a cracking view though, isn't it? I like it. I feel small. I tell you what, I'm glad I didn't leave any later than I did because I think. I'm just about getting all of the daylight out of this uh, little trail today. Had I uh, delayed another hour or hour and a half. Far more relaxing, the sound of a babbling brook as opposed to a force nine gale blowing through my bloody ears. Oh, it's lovely. I find it quite therapeutic. Right, I think the fact I'm sort of there's water flowing 
I'm, I'm basically walking along a stream. There's a stream there and the footpath is also flowing water. You can see there, there isn't much to separate the two. Um, and I don't think I've got far to go. I'm hoping I don't have to um, scale any of these peaks. I guess this is scree, isn't it? Proper scree. Oh, I'm so glad I did this today. I was in two minds whether to come here or somewhere else, but it's um, a lovely bit of the world. Really nice. And uh, touch wood, the heavens haven't opened. It did threaten too early. There were a couple of drops. It was torrential on the drive up, but it's been all right thus far. I'm sure I said it before in another video, but I do wish I paid more attention in geography at school. There's this weird thing that's happening. What oh, is it going to happen now? No. When the wind is just the right angle, obviously it comes down that valley, hits this wall, and it just it sheets straight up this this hillside here. But you see it. Go, it's really weird. You have to be here. But um. Yeah, I guess I should read some more books, really, shouldn't I? Try and catch up and all that learning I didn't do at school. I did do some learning, I just didn't... I won't say I didn't enjoy geography. It's just, um... It didn't really teach you much. I don't remember what was taught in geography. It was more of just a... general knowledge type class. Jack of all trades, master of none, something like that. Uh, I was about to say, we're on tarmac, so we're on the home straight, but I'm pretty sure the home straight is that road down there. That's how I put money on it. Um, right, backwards, turn left. <laughs> well, hello, YouTubes, we're in the van. Uh, we're back. It is 5.20 and it is almost pitch black. Uh, it completely and utterly slipped my mind that the clocks were moving. Um, I sort of cottoned on to it about half three, half four, when I, I thought the sky's looking very dark. Is it going to be a very big storm rolling in? But no, it was just the clocks. Um, so I was probably fortunate. Uh, fortunate for me, it only happens twice a year. But, um, you know, that said, I basically squeezed everything I could out of today and today's daylight um, I couldn't have done much more I got about I don't know hour and a half two hour drive back home now um, I'll just poodle back well back home back to my hotel in inverted commas um, but yeah on that note I will uh, sign off I apologize if this uh, video was a bit too windy I have actually got a fluffy cat filter on the camera that's it you probably saw it blowing in front of the lens several times. It needs a little headband. Um, I don't know how well that would have worked because that wind was really strong today. Um, <laughs> I was taking steps and the wind was blowing my steps off course. <laughs> um, but yeah, anyway, I will wave goodbye and I will see you all on the next one.